Oxygen Blast Technical Seminars are an Intertech production. For instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com. Let me uh, take us back to our presentation and kind of uh, wrap up here, gang, in the next 10 minutes with a couple of, uh, couple of other items. With, uh, with the Jersey implementation, there's also a client API. What I mean by that is if you take a look at the specification as provided by JAXRS, the specification doesn't specify how to build a client. So if you're going to build a Java client to talk to a JAXRS application, um, you could just use plain old Java.net URL and URL connection classes and HTTP client classes to build a mechanism to communicate with this web service. After all, it is just HTTP worldwide web communication, and so many of us have been doing that with websites and doing things like screen scraping for years. But what we'd probably like is a mechanism that's a little bit easier to use. And how do we do that? Well, the JAXRS implementation doesn't yet provide a client API, but most of the implementations of JAXRS do. And in particular, Jersey provides a client API that allows us directly to communicate with that web service. Now, this is an API, again, special to Jersey. However, you'll find most implementations come with such an API. The API is not dictated by specification. Therefore, it's going to be different per implementation. And that's a warning you have to kind of take in hand, is that the clients you might build would change if you switch environments. So here's a simple little application using the Jersey JAXRS client API to talk to, for example, Hello World Service. And you can see it's a pretty easy API to work with. Create a client uh, instance with that uh, JAXRS client instance. Tell it what particular resource you want. In other words, provide the URI for the resource you want to talk to. Go out and set up things like query parameters or path parameters as necessary, and then invoke that particular request with a call to if I can find it here, where's my, oh, here we go, my web resource query parameters get and pass in all my information, and out comes my response, as we see down here. So the client API is fairly simplistic, but enough to allow us to communicate pretty effectively with those JAXRS services. Again, not every uh, implementation is going to be exactly the same. A lot of them are similar to Jersey's implementation, but since it's not dictated by specification yet, that client API it's still a little bit of a hit or miss with regard to uh, uh, your particular implementation. Now, what to think about here before one starts implementing uh, JAX uh, RS services, or for that matter, any type of uh, RESTful web service. Again, it's not a standard. RESTful web services follow conventions. Well understood conventions, yes, but still more or less conventions. If you notice the things like my um, URIs that I chose and the names of my methods and the types of ways I send in data, that's all based on my decisions as a developer. There aren't any specifications out there. There's not something like a SOAP spec that dictates exactly how that communication occurs. So therefore, you really have to have a little bit more communication between those that are client and service providers about how that should be done. It also assumes uh, point to point communication. We often draw pictures in the web service world about clients communicating with services, but we often forget that in between those things might get routed around to all sorts of different services, or I should say routers and equipment and other software before it finally gets sent on to what is uh, an ultimate receiver of that request. And that's a little bit more difficult to do in this RESTful world. It operates via the World Wide Web paradigm, so it's going to go through the same kinds of routes that our World Wide Web request would go through. But doing any kind of work on that communication request as part of that whole paradigm between the two points, a little bit more difficult to do. The model just doesn't really support that well yet. And generally speaking today, REST is bound to HTTP. There are groups that talk about using RESTful um, styles in other paradigms, but there really isn't a lot of uh, support out there for it yet. In other words, there's not a lot of APIs, a lot of uh, implementations that we can kind of draw from to make our world easier. So if you're going to do RESTful-type web services in something other than HTTP, you're really kind of growing your own. In fact, even uh, Fielding uh, didn't say that this whole RESTful paradigm had to occur by HTTP. It's just that we don't yet have the infrastructure to support it.
A lot of these next uh, bullet points go to some of the questions you all had that I addressed at the break. Things like uh, security. Well, yep, you can use HTTPS and essentially uh, secure the entire uh, pipe in terms of communication. But now you're also placing a, a bit of onus on both the client server to communicate things in that HTTPS paradigm. In other words, we're not encrypting little pieces of the message. We're encrypting the whole thing. Uh, that might be a little bit taxing. And, of course, requires us to set up HTTPS environment, much like we have to do for the World Wide Web. And there are no standards around that yet in terms of how to address other types of or other maybe um, security paradigms where we only want a portion of the message encrypted. That's not there yet in the rest world, unlike in the SOAP world where we have things like WS Security to help dictate that. Transactions, uh, asynchronous activity, all, again, issues that really haven't been addressed formally in the REST world. Now, the REST people will might tell you that that's a good thing. REST people will say it's a lighter weight communication mechanism, so if you need those types of activities, well, you need to kind of, kind of grow your own and uh, communicate that out to your clients. There aren't standards for a reason. Those uh, sound like great answers to a point, but then we really need these kinds of capabilities in our environment, in our service environment. We often are left uh, wanting and having to do a lot of code on our own to help implement those. Uh, lastly, there was a question that I believe uh, was Rick who was asking also a question about, hey, can we find out what web services, RESTful web services are out there and what they have to offer? In other words, can we get capabilities on a RESTful web service? Much like we use WSDL uh, today for things like uh, SOAP-based web services. The answer there, again, is uh, not really. There is a sort of, uh, if you will, some clumsy implementations of using Whistle to provide information about a RESTful web service today, uh, but that's a very clumsy implementation and a bit haphazard at this point. There's also a new technology, something called Waddle, Web Application Description Language, that's going to help hopefully address something like getting a capabilities list out of a web Web, RESTful web service um, site or collection of resources. These are still very much in their infancy. So we're still seeing the growth of registries and adoption of things like the description language in the RESTful community. And admittedly, folks, this is a community that pushes back a little bit on this kind of technology. And RESTful web services doesn't want to be that heavy technology specification laden technology like uh, SOAP-based web services. So in some circles, there's a bit of a uh, pushback or restraint on having too much out there. And in those cases where you need some of these capabilities, the idea is you may have to grow your own. There is a big list of resources, again, that I have available uh, for you that's part of the download files. In fact, it's part of the code download. So you, when you get the code download, you'll also see a whole list of resources to get you started. But here's some of the uh, resources you might be able to dig into right away to get you started, gang, if you want to learn some of the basics about RESTful web services. Uh, IBM Developer Works has a great article out there on RESTful web services. Uh, of course, the JAX-RS page will tell you all about how uh, JAX-RS specification allows you to develop these RESTful web services in Java. There's a great uh, book uh, via, via uh, O'Reilly on RESTful Java. And uh, in this book, they also not only take a look at JAX-RS, but a couple of the other implementations out there as well. We've got the Jersey page. Again, this is the implementation of, or at least the reference implementation of JAX-RS. Uh, and here is the REST Easy site, yet another page, or I should say another resource or another implementation of JAX-RS. So if you don't believe Jersey is the appropriate implementation for you or if you're looking for other options, take a look at the REST Easy site. Of course, we'd love to have you in our complete Java web service class. We address uh, RESTful web service as part of our general web service class now. So we spend uh, a large portion of the class looking at SOAP-based web services. And I always kind of jokingly tell people, you know, it takes us three days to get things implemented by a SOAP where we'll address RESTful-style web services in about an afternoon. Of course, that's a little bit tongue-in-cheek and that you also kind of have to understand the paradigm before you can look in detail at RESTful Web Services. Feel free to contact me, gang, at jwhiteintertech.com. I'll be help, happy to try and help you uh, understand uh, RESTful Web Services and address any questions you might have. And then we are also on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn now as well, where I'm sure some of these uh, slides and information can be found. And again, Dan will send you out a, an email that will include how you get the access to uh, the recording and how you get access to the slides and downloads if you didn't catch my earlier slide in the presentation. For more free learning resources and to see the latest lineup of our instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com.